likely never give much thought to how it gets to your cup. Coffee's an amazing product. There's so much romance involved with going out into the jungles, all the way to the cafe where you have a very skilled barista making that coffee. Coffee is a great elixir that encourages social activity. It facilitates conversation. Phil Beatty thinks about coffee all the time. As a coffee buyer for Delano's, a small roaster outside Seattle, his beans are enjoyed by thousands in specialty coffee shops and grocery stores across the country. We keep about two weeks on hand, so it's about 120,000 pounds of coffee. It's a job that requires many months away from home in faraway places. Most of the time I'm traveling around Central and South America, East Africa, even the South Pacific to find the very best coffees. When you look at a bag of coffee from some far off place and you realize everything that was involved in getting it here, what do you think about? You know, for me, this, this coffee, this bag, gives me a great, deep sense of responsibility. But there are so many people and so many hands that have influenced this coffee and how it got to me. We wanted to see for ourselves where the supply chain begins, how coffee beans grown thousands of miles away eventually become your morning fix. We followed Beatty to northern Peru, over the Andes Mountains, home to some of the world's highest quality beans. The 11-hour plane ride turned out to be the easiest part of our trip. We land 500 miles north of Lima in Tarapoto, the gateway to Peru's Amazon basin. Finally in Tarapoto. place where just getting around can be an adventure. The first time I went to Origin to see coffee being harvested and grown, I was blown away. This is a long way from Washington State. It's definitely a change of scenery, change of culture. For Beatty, it's just another day on the job. He travels 150,000 miles a year in search of the best coffee beans money can buy. This is where our journey really begins. We'll cross this river and then begin hiking to the coffee farm. Here we are on a tributary of the Amazon going off to find our trail up into the mountains. You gotta go to the right spot. Easier said than done. Across the river, we meet the men who will guide us on our trek. Guzman, quiero presentarle a Scott Wapner. Senor Guzman, mucho gusto. Nice to meet you. It's un placer. We look forward to going to your farm. Guzman Inga Julica is 47 years old, a second generation coffee farmer. It's his beans that Phil Beatty came all this way to buy. You got everything? The trail into Peru's coffee-growing region is treacherous with hidden dangers. The land is controlled by locals who rarely encounter Americans, let alone ones with cameras. Our guides are not taking chances. Our hike to Guzman's coffee farm is gritty, grimy, and grubby. Six miles, sweat-soaked slog through streams, and mud so sticky and deep, you could lose a shoe or your sanity. Oh man, that was no joke. You could sit in the office, you could sit on your couch, use the internet now to order coffee from anywhere in the world. Why do you come all the way out here? It's really crucial to show that farmer that I care. It gives them validation and it lets me make sure that when I pay a really high price for a high quality coffee that that money is making it back to the person who in the end is responsible for creating that quality. Not all of the coffee Phil Beatty buys is this hard to get to, but he believes in some cases the story of the farmer and the provenance of the beans can be a great marketing tool. Here's the coffee right here on the trees. Coffee beans actually come from trees that take about five years to bear fruit and thrive in this jungle climate. 
Robusta beans are grown at lower altitude, but here, the high altitude, sweltering humidity, ideal shade, and rich soil are a perfect blend for growing the superior Arabica beans that Beatties come for. Peru is a major supplier, but in Brazil, which grows 40% of the world's coffee, harvesting is beginning to look like this. High-tech and automated, while farmers everywhere else pick by hand. The stakes are very high. The competition among U.S. roasters to find the very best coffee is, is very tight. And, and if I'm not here, then I guarantee you somebody else will be to get the best coffee for their customer. The stakes are also high for Guzman and his family. A sale could improve their lives for years to come. I never dreamed that a roaster will come all the way up here to see my little farm. After more than four hours on the trail, we arrive in darkness at Guzman's farm. When I came here in October, I knew that there was something here that could be very special. This is Phil Beatty's second visit here. He had come seven months earlier, liked what he saw, and secured a deal for this year's harvest. Guzman and his family moved here five years ago and built this two-story structure with no door or indoor plumbing. They wash in this makeshift shower, use this crudely built outhouse, and sleep here. Today, they claim about 60 acres of land and pay their handful of workers about $12 a day. In a good year, the Guzmans can make as much as 20,000 soles, about $6,500. It may not sound like a lot, but in Peru, where the minimum wage is $185 a month, six grand goes a long way. How has the coffee business improved your family's life? We now have some money left at the end of the crop year. It's not like it used to be, when at the end of the year, we had nothing left in our pockets. It makes me very proud that I have a quality product. It only motivates me to keep working at it and expand my production. Beatty didn't know for sure what he was getting until now. It looks pretty good. This particular tree is loaded down and got a lot of ripe cherries on it. This cherry has two coffee beans in it. One of the things I, I like to see is a, is a lot of ripe cherries at the same time. Are these dark red ones? Yeah, this, this nice deep red is, is ripe. That's when it's gonna have most of the sweetness. If you have any of these green cherries, these are gonna give a really sour taste to the coffee. Guzman, es, es un gusto verte. Igual manera yo también. An entire tree produces only about a pound and a half of coffee a year. The beans are actually inside these cherries. The hundreds of pounds of cherries are hauled down the mountain. A team of workers then cleans them, removes the pulp, and washes the beans by hand. A lot of work goes into the process of coffee. It's very important to the taste. Washing prevents the cherries and ultimately the coffee from smelling like dirt. They're now fermented and spread out to dry by Guzman's son. There are still two months and 4,000 miles to go before these beans make it into a cup and become part of the $80 billion global coffee industry. Back in Peru, growing coffee is Guzman Pulica's sole source of income. So this trip to the local co-op for his annual harvest is an important one. The co-op inspects his beans for defects, excessive moisture, and stones. And from there, prices are set. It's a good coffee. It's clean. When we smell it, it smells clean. For each 120-pound bag of green coffee sold for export, Guzman is paid $232. This year's harvest, a good one, went entirely to Seattle coffee buyer Phil Beatty, who paid Guzman $6,500, almost twice what he would have gotten just a year ago. 
the key ingredients of a successful relationship coffee model are all are all here. <laughs> <laughs> and now Phil Beatty needs to get his beans back to the States. A long and costly process. The beans he paid $2.70 a pound for in Peru cost him $3.83 after shipment to the U.S. After those beans are roasted and packaged, the cost goes to almost $7 a pound. Add in marketing and distribution cost, he's up to $10.50. And finally, after accounting for overhead and profit, the retail price of Phil Beatty's high quality coffee beans comes to $14.70 a pound. Coffee farmers only see a fraction of that, which is where Paul Rice comes in. The fair trade guarantees that farmers get more money for their hard work. As president and CEO of Fair Trade USA, Rice tries to help farmers get their fair share. They're selling to middlemen who basically roll up in a truck and say, okay, today's price is X, take it or leave it. And so that's precisely the problem that fair trade is trying to help farmers overcome. Do you know right now that coffee prices are so high? We are selling it very cheaply. We know that. The people who are making the money are the people who buy it from us and resell it. By eliminating the middlemen, fair trade ensures the growers themselves are paid a fair minimum price by American coffee wholesalers when prices are down. And on the flip side, giving them the right to renegotiate when coffee prices are high. The money that goes back to farmers through fair trade is precisely what allows those farmers to reinvest in quality. It's such an accomplishment that these people can get this coffee from so far away out in the mountains all the way down to this mill where it was processed and now I just can't wait to get it into the roaster and, and taste it with my customers. CNBC. We marked those Arabica beans just before they were shipped to the U.S. Two months and 4,000 miles later, we were there with Phil Beatty in Sumner, Washington, when our precious cargo arrived. La Familia de Guzman. Yeah. And that's the stuff. Beatty roasted the beans at 425 degrees for 14 minutes. And then came the moment of truth. Cheers. Cheers. That moment when you get that flashback to being on the farm, seeing Guzman, following the mules down the muddy trail, it all comes back and it just makes that cup so enjoyable. That's great. It was a long way to go for a cup of coffee and a window into what it takes to get a pound of Guzman Julica's finest to the store shelf where it sells for $14.70. I'll never think about coffee the same again.